Hello everybody. I'm back and I did not lie. I wasn't going to do another review, but I started reading about Blue Sky, which is the initial review that I did here. And I did it as an amateur. I, it was more of a reflection than a review because what do I know? I don't know anything about these things. Uh, so Blue Sky um, is a movie that was filmed in 1990 but somehow didn't get released, well, it, it's not somehow, it didn't get released until uh, 1994 because Orion Pictures went bankrupt. And sadly, it also was released after the death of Tony Richardson, who I guess was the producer of this film. This film was based loosely on the life of uh, Rama Stagner, uh, and this was actually based on her parents own marriage. Ooh, ooh, kind of scary, right? Uh, apparently, they eventually divorced, uh, and which was one of the questions in Blue Sky that I was left with about uh, the, the uh, husband was like, why did he stay with this woman? Yes, she was incredibly beautiful and sexy, and I get that, I get it. And, and even, even in the midst of her madness and her bipolar disorder, she had something about her that I can sort of understand would keep a man sort of interested. You know, it's like edgy and exciting. But what will she do next? You know, sort of thing. Unfortunately, what she did next was another dude all the time. So there's that. <laughs> Who wants to stick around for that? No decent man would, right? Um, critical praise to this movie, which I also miss because what I started doing is I started reading a commentary about the movie and it was a lot of people panning the movie, just like, oh, it's not that great. You know, it's not one of Tommy Lee Jones' best movies. Da -da 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 -da. You know, it's, it's a chick flick. It's lightweight. Yeah, it's not Tommy Lee Jones in his usual, but it was a nice change for a change. And I was happy to see him play a more passionate, uh, a more involved role in terms of family an actual nuclear family, him, the dad, the two daughters, and the wife. Um, Jessica Lang received a Oscar, right, for this, for her performance, which she earned, definitely earned this Oscar. What I didn't know is that uh, she and Tommy had done another film together, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, she was very young in this, and so was he. And, you know, we all have the Liz Taylor, Paul Newman characters or actors as actors of these particular characters in our minds. How do we get free of it? I watched the entire thing with her and Tommy Lee and I liked it. But, man, I kept thinking, now, how would Paul Newman have done that? Or how would Liz Taylor, Liz Taylor have done that? This is, I couldn't get it out of my head. Not to say that they're that they didn't do a good job. I think at the time Jessica Lane Lang seemed very green. Um, her her lines came out very stiff, and there just wasn't that infusion of passion and believability into them and the and the relationship between her. And, and uh, her husband wasn't believable. It, it just, you know, there's just, I hate to say it again, Liz Taylor and, and Paul Newman just, just brought so many sparks into that, that um, I believed that, you know, but, but isn't it interesting that in the, in, they go from a relationship where there is no sex and cat on a hot tin roof to a relationship where there's a lot of sex, but probably shouldn't be. I don't know. That's that's my two cents. <laughs> so we have in blue sky. Okay, we have the father who 
is uh, played by Tommy Lee Jones. Um, yeah, as Hank Marshall. Isn't it interesting here? Okay, I have to say it. Wasn't he a Hank and wasn't his name Hank in the Valley of Elah? Why is he Hank so much? Anyway, life has interesting. Okay, so uh, Jessica Lang plays Cal Carly Marshall, uh, Powers Booth as Vince Johnson, who is Tommy Lee Jones' superior officer. Powers Booth passed away, um, and one of the best actors, I believe, in Hollywood character actors. Uh, he was in Tombstone as Curly Bill, and I loved it. Everybody I knew who loved Tombstone loved Powers Booth in this film but he's that kind of actor where he can become the film just watching him was a treat it was a treat like what's he going to do next the way he would use his eyes his face his face acted he was a face actor right this is like it was just delicious to watch powers booth act carrie snodgrass as as uh uh as uh, powers booth wife uh just perfectly you know, I worked on a military base, and yes, yes, these women who seem to be locked locked in the 60s, I mean, this was supposed to be the 60s, but you run into these women who are such military wives, and they're, they're taught, and they're, and they're groomed to support their man, and I could see that in this character until he crossed her one too many times. Then that, then that came out, right? Um, Amy LeCain as Alex Marshall, Anna Klimp as Becky Marshall, Chris O'Donnell, I haven't seen much of him lately. He was a little cutie pie and, you know, and doing a lot of work at one, at one point, uh, really enjoyed him, but he sort of disappeared. Don't know where he went. Um, no point in talking about the NATO officers and all those, but, um, it says here that the film generally received positive reviews and holds a 77% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I haven't figured out Rotten Tomatoes uh, yet, um, but maybe I should. I don't know. Um, is based on 22 reviews with an average rating of 6.4 on a scale of up, up to 10, I guess, being the best. Entertainment Weekly raved about Lang, calling her turn a fierce, brave, sexually charged performance, and I agree. One of the most convincing portrayals I've seen of someone whose behavior flirts with craziness without crossing into it. Well, she did cross into it. <laughs> More than a few times. Anyway, while the New York Daily News noted, Lang smolders, storms, rages and whimpers through blue sky, acting with every muscle in her body, and yes, she did. And she used her body to her best advantage. I just was like, when uh, at the party where she's dancing to It's Only Make Believe, I'm like, oh my God, who choreographed it? Or did she just spontaneously just start doing that dance? And I just thought this woman is just in her body. She is in this moment. She's just doing this to the T. Okay, so Jessica Lange just did that. I don't know. She she deserved two Oscars for that. Uh, um, Variety noted Jessica Lange makes the most of an opportunity at a full blown star as Carly Marshall. In fact, Bridget Bardot and Marilyn Monroe are the only other actresses. One can imagine pulling off this role, and that's so true. And it's so true. I thought about that. I was like, who else could have done this at that time? Hmm. Marilyn Monroe could have done the hell out of it. Brigitte Bardot? Sure. That's about it. So Jessica Lane kind of just like, she pulled up and parked and said, no, I got this. And she did the heck out of it. What can I say? She has, uh, it says she has the showy role 
with almost unlimited opportunities to emote and strut her stuff, which she does magnificently with total abandon. The New York Times wrote, it is a lavish role for Miss Lang, and she brings it to fierce emotions intact, echoes her dazzling role in, in Francis about Francis Farmer. The Los Angeles Times states, also praising her performance, calling it striking and noting Lang's acting in Blue Sky leaves you awestruck. Yes, it does. It is a great performance, probably her best. The Washington Post said Lang offers a plush platinum star turn. She is what Carly imagines she might have become if only she hadn't been a military wife. Mostly Monroe with a soup con of Bardot. Well, I think it was mostly. I would say that Marilyn Monroe would, would have done this role. And I think maybe Jessica Lane was greatly informed by the performances of Marilyn Monroe. And she did it. We should ask her. Uh, yeah, she won Best, uh, Best Actress for that. Um, so back to my assessment of the movie, which I think is, well, here, here we go. <laughs> Like I said, I'm no New York Times or L.A. Times or Variety, no. I'm just me sitting here in my living room. Uh, humble little little me sitting here in my living room doing my thing. Anyway, but, but about a movie I absolutely love. About actors I enjoy. What is better? What is better? Nothing. Nothing. So... Here we have Hank, another Hank. Um, Tommy Lee Jones in this movie. I said it before. I said it before. Jessica Lang is the one who gets the role where she gets to emote. She gets to strut. She gets to slink. She gets to be this sexy vixen, even though she's a cheating, mad housewife, right? She's a military wife where so much is expected of her on base to be a certain way, to be quiet, to be prim and proper, and to be tucked away so that she can't embarrass the military and her husband. That's what a military wife does, okay? Jessica Lang was the polar opposite of that. She was all about herself. She was all about portraying the Southern Belle to the, to the point where um, sometimes I thought she was pulling in a little Blanche Dubois into this from the streetcar named Desire. I was like, I saw a little Blanche, you know, with the scarves and the, and the, and the props, you know, using a scarf as a prop, a prop, um, to sort of, uh, uh, give you this idea of how feminine and soft she is, you know, and yeah, she brought it. I mean, I, I, I got tired of the scarves after a while, but she used them to effect, you know, that that was just marvelous, marvelous. But still, so, you know, I, I find that this is a true story and I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. I've seen these women everywhere that, um, is it madness or with military wives, is it a way of seeking attention? that got out of control. When your husband's away so much, when you're not his priority so much, how do you get attention? What do you do? There's there's military wives, clubs, they do this, they do that. They drink a lot on bases. They did they did portray that properly. A lot of alcohol. I don't drink, never did. But lots of alcohol. That's the other way. Sedation. How do you get through this? These separations these, these moves, can you imagine your life being yanked up every year or whatever it is and moving to these places where you don't know anybody, your kids don't know anybody, and, and you're expected to hit the ground running. You're expected, you know, to, to keep your composure and deportment and to be the good military wife. She's an officer's wife, not just an enlisted man's wife. She's an officer's wife. So the pressure on her was even greater. Why they don't talk about um, her 
mental illness I don't know in this movie maybe the the um, writer Rama Stagner didn't know or her parents didn't know that her mom might be bipolar maybe they just didn't diagnose it I don't know but it would have been I now that I think of it if they had said anywhere in this movie that she was crazy it wouldn't have been as fun I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much you see because we're all thinking oh she lives in a cloud she's like a fairy so light so fluffy so you know up there who wanted to see her come down I didn't I think I wanted to see her stop hurting herself and her children and I wanted her to stop hurting Hank who seemed like he was such a dear-hearted man such a passionate sweet man who loved her so much that you know I think that probably in real life, as in the movie, he held on as long as he could. So we open, the movie opens with her in Hawaii. Um, I don't know if it's isolated. You know, bases are always like far out because you have planes landing. They have so much equipment. They have to be far out. Um, Hawaii is so bucolic, so beautiful. So well, who wouldn't want to be in Hawaii? So at any rate, we have this beautiful setting. She is busy entertaining these NATO pilots, and they're dancing, ole, ole, you know, when she's like doing the Spanish dancing and the, the whole thing. And I'm thinking, there's nothing wrong with that. What would she be doing if she weren't doing that? How many dishes can you wash? How 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 many... Chickens can you fry? I mean, uh, how many times can you go to the grocery store until you almost like implode in your brain? Was she crazy before she became a military wife? Oh, maybe the military drove her crazy. Being separated from her husband drove her crazy. Um, having no support, um, you know. Um, so we open as she's doing this little fandango with these military. I did poop, I'm sorry. I need to get a handle on not burping when I'm doing reviews. <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, uh, so she's like doing the fandango with these guys, these young, virile, handsome guys. And, and her husband walks in and he, he's looking at her and he's, he's like, yes, baby, I love you. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. And I love the way these guys look at you. Yeah, that tells me I have something. And that makes me feel good. But there's a downside to that. There's there's like a dark side to it where he says, after the gentlemen have left, he says, you go too far. And, and, and then you see this discussion open up about her cheating. You didn't want to know that she was actually cheating. You wanted to believe that, oh, she's a flirt. She's harmless. She's just a flirt. But oh no. Oh no. She's a cheat. And no doubt, one thing I do know about military bases, gossip, gossip, gossip. And your life will be on the menu if you don't control that mess. And I am sure he has suffered considerably um, because of his wife. What is a bigger blow to a man's ego than to love a woman madly and to have her cheat? Have her cheat, not just once, not just twice, but over and over and over again. Uh, and even, uh, as we are to find out, with his superior officer. Oh, my God. Her first meltdown, which you sometimes wonder while watching this, like, is this a legitimate, like, I'm tired of this, shit. I'm tired, I'm tired, and that he doesn't hear her. One thing I'm convinced of with her, their relationship is Hank doesn't hear her. Somehow she's probably learned that Hank pays attention when I act out, so therefore she rewards she is rewarded uh, when she acts out with his attention. 
that she doesn't get otherwise. So it's like a, 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 a game almost where um, she throws a tantrum. Um, we're, we're not in this lovely palatial uh, southern mansion with a black maid, which is what she wanted, <clears throat> which plays into her delusions about who she is and her station in life. She is an officer's wife, but uh, apparently Hank doesn't get those kind of assignments. I don't know, probably because of her. A lot of politics on basis as well. Yes. So she sees this house that they've been put in, which is, to me, a pretty nice sized place, but sort of nestled amongst enlisted. It looks like it's with enlisted people. I don't know. And she throws a hissy fit and destroys the house. The kids are cowering. Hank is not able to control her. She takes off, honey, she takes off in the car, drives into town, terrorizes people in the town. He's able to go in there and talk her down and takes her home. There is no punishment for her. Uh, her behavior, and then you and, and then you toy with this idea: is it her behavior, or is it mental illness? Well, maybe a little bit of both. You can be mentally ill and have bad behavior that isn't not associated with the mental illness. Uh, I think that she learned how to manipulate Hank. She knew Hank was weak for her. She knew Hank loved her. She knew how to manipulate him and to get to get to get what she wanted. And it was also a game. It was also a thrill. She lived on thrills. This was another thrill for her that she could have all of this attention through screaming, crashing, throwing things. Uh, and it's like, look at that beautiful woman. You know, we don't know if we're more mesmerized by her beauty or we're titillated by her actions. You know, she's doing what I'd like to be able to do, but because I'm not as pretty as her, I wouldn't get away with it. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's that kind of thing. And so he takes her into the house and he, he makes her comfortable and he cradles her. And um, he was in Love Story. There's a scene in Love Story that's kind of like the scene in Blue Sky where he cradles uh, as Ally McGraw is dying, Ryan O'Neill cradles her in the bed. And, I, and it just reminded me of that. But it's also uh, a, a coincidental, I guess, that Tommy Lee Jones was in that movie as, as well, you know. And, and it's just very tender. It's very tender. I was so glad to see him be this tender in a movie. I looked at him differently that moment. And I talk about that in the other video video reviews that I do, that it was at that moment watching Blue Sky that I was like, wait a minute, he has great potential to be one of these guys who always plays the lover in movies, right? He has that potential because I was drawn to him. I was like, oh, look at him, look at him. But I think also women might tend to see in his, in his character that forgiving husband, that loving husband who who doesn't walk away, who says, oh, I, 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 I realize you're dealing with a lot, or I just, I love you so much that even though you're a little wacky, I'm not going to walk away from you. I'm not going to cheat on you. Uh, he didn't cheat on her. So, you know, I think that in this movie is where I was drawn to Tommy Lee Jones because of his character and his character portrayed the kind of husband most men want, women want. Wow, did I say that? Most women want. Maybe some men want it too, I don't know. But, you know, forgiving, long-suffering, loving, handsome and sexy. Come on now. In this movie, Tommy Lee Jones looks so good. He looked delicious. Hey, everybody has their peak. I think this was his 
you know, appearance peak in movies. Yes, I do. He was just gorgeous. And um, so we see the scene, which I think is one of the best scenes in the movie. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of other stuff in the movie going on, but there's some pivotal scenes where you get a glimpse of, of the actors and their characters. And in this scene, uh, you know, he's, Tommy Lee Jones does this thing. He cradles his head, face palm, whatever, whenever there's some kind of tension or conundrum going. And I find that interesting. He's sitting in the bed and he's got his hands on his nose like that. And I'm thinking, this poor man, <laughs> this woman, <laughs> she has worn him out. He's trying to figure out what do I do? What do I do with her? She's like an atomic bomb. She's like an atomic bomb. I brought that up in the other review. And so the scene where they are in bed, where he's just cradling her, she's covered up. There's nothing sexual. He is loving her, loving her. But I, but I, but I think I also could see that he's trying to figure out, is this the last time I'm going to put up with this? And she's worried. I think she's also a little bit embarrassed because her face is hidden. She's turned away from him. And maybe she loses a little respect each time he allows her to get away with it. And I can see that 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 could happen, that she's done too much. I can't allow this to continue. And in the real life story, yeah, they divorced. Uh, this is a quintessential kind of situation too, where there could be abuse in the marriage, but they don't talk about it. Um, Rama Stegner doesn't talk about whether or not there was uh, any physical abuse in her parents' family, in her family. Um, and I think that's an important thing to address. It's like, well, what happened? Where, how, how did they work out that tension? Was it always sex? Well, they didn't have sex that day. I don't think. Um, but somewhere early in the morning hours, he wakes up, he reaches for her. You see, he's just as addicted to her as she is to him. He reaches for her. And when he doesn't see her, She's sitting up apart from him, worried, worried that maybe this is it, that he's going to kick my butt out now. We're in a new town and I've already ruined it for him. You kick her out, you know, beat her ass. Is he an abuser? We don't know. We don't know what she's worried about. But he, but she crawls over to the bed and she says, Daddy, I think she says, Daddy, do you still love me? And he reassures her, yes, yes, yes. You see, you see, Tommy, I don't know. See, I don't know if that was in the script. I don't know if he decided to do that on the fly. Either way, either way, my God, what every woman wants is that unconditional acceptance and love, no matter what I've done, whatever has gone on, I want you to bring me back to the bed and accept me back like I was. And he kisses her and he says, oh yes, yes, you know. And I was like, I'm, I'm one over, I'm one over. Of course, it's just a characterization. Yes, it is Tommy Lee Jones. Yes, it is a movie with a script and a director. And a, this is, <clears throat> I believe wholeheartedly that every actor brings a part of themselves to whatever role they play. They tap into a familiar experience or feeling, and they infuse it into that role. And I believe that he did. I do. I just do. Anyway, Blue Sky, don't knock the movie. See the movie. A lot of people I talk to, half of them are like, yeah, I saw it. I didn't think much of it. I don't even like Tommy Lee Jones. I don't even know who Jessica Lange is. Okay, so great. See the movie. 
the other half of the people I talked to, they were like, yes, I remember that movie. Wasn't that a good movie? You see, you see, it, it just, it's a movie you won't forget. Um, it's a movie that, that every married couple has their moments of madness. Every mad married couple has their moments of mea culpa, I forgive you, or I ask forgiveness, or please give it, or do you love me, still love me? Every married couple has this the, the seesaws in the relationship, this not seesaw, but roller coaster. Seesaw too, I guess. And um, so, um, yes, yes, oh, this movie, this is the movie that got me on my uh, Tommy Lee Jones binge watching to see if I guess I'm a researcher. Yes, I'm a researcher. I have two master's degrees. <laughs> I'm a researcher. <laughs> but beyond that, beyond that, I love movies and I love dissecting them. I like looking at the actors, the characters. If there is a book to reference, I like to read the book. And there was no book for Blue Sky, but um, Knowing a little bit more of the backstory, which I was curious about, tells me a lot. And so there it is, everybody. I came back just to do that. I, hmm. I don't know if I should have or not, but I did. So anyway, this is Sunday. To <coughs> don't eat trail mix before you talk on video, which is what I did. I think I'm also a little bit allergic to walnuts. I wish they wouldn't put walnuts in trail mix. That's an aside. Um, tomorrow's Labor Day. Um, have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Barbecue, do wonderful things. Uh, we lost Aretha Franklin this week, the, the queen of soul. Uh, through her, her voice was the soundtrack throughout my life. And like a lot of people mentioned, she had a song for every bit of your relationship. You better think, respect, <laughs> everything. Aretha could sing you through a relationship, okay? All right. We also lost John McCain, a man I greatly respect. And I'm a progressive, I'm a liberal. Yes, I am, yes, I am. So a lot of my friends totally disagree with me about John McCain, but I tell you, my heart does not lead me in the wrong directions. And John McCain, I respect, I respect, I respect a true American, a person with dignity, a person of death. Of course he made mistakes. <laughs> we all do. Can't, can't, you can't, you know, some people are, oh, he supported the Iraq war. Well, a lot of people did. A lot of people bought that. A lot of people bought that. Listen, move on. He also defended Barack Obama amidst an audience of racists that stood up and tried to say that he was a Muslim and all this. And he was like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know, when he did that, I said, yes, this is an isolated incident. But that didn't just come off the top of his head. It wasn't scripted. That came, John McCain was like, no, no. He would not abide a racist. That man had integrity. He had integrity. Okay, enough about John McCain, but that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. He's a true American. I'm a true American. Yeah, they come, we come in all kinds of shapes and flavors, right? Yeah, that's okay. I could say that and feel good about it. You guys have a wonderful Labor Day. Talk to you later. <laughs>